JJK263 will not be leaking tonight. This is just a reminder that we are still on this extended break due to Gege Akutami falling ill. So no new chapter, but the good news is next week we're back. So we're almost through. We've almost made it. Just got to hang on a little bit longer. And in the meantime, I've got some JJK content to hold you over. So let's go over some questions from you guys, but spoilers beware. All right, first order of business really quick. Duke, my man, insane donation once again, but I went ahead and refunded you since we weren't able to touch base uh, and I couldn't quite figure out what channel you wanted me to review. So for now, I'm gonna send that back your way, but man, I really do appreciate you. All right, so our first question today is from Big and he says, this may be copium, but is it possible for Gojo to wake up in Yuta's body while Yuta is in Gojo's body? And yes, I think it's, possible now i'm not going to sit here and say it's like probable or that's definitely going to happen but i do think it's possible and this is something i talked about in my videos um after chapter 262 so if you didn't see those check them out because i talk a little bit more about it but i think there's enough kind of pieces on the board where you could theorize this and it wouldn't be completely crazy. Um, but there's so many unknowns still like is gojo's brain in yuta's body Maybe, but we don't know. And if it is, then I think that makes this a lot more likely. Does Rika know that Yuta is in Gojo's body right now? Maybe, but we don't know for sure. We saw her crying at the end of the last chapter. There was a focus on Akotsu's eyes. What is Gege setting up for? Um, and I talk more about like what potentially Rika could do if she like sacrifices her life or something in one of my 262 videos. And if Gojo's brain is in that body, then like maybe he would come back. Um, so I don't know. I still think the most likely thing we'll see is Gojo within his own body, like in Yuta right now, has some sort of agency the same way we saw Geto choke Kenjaku. But I do think this is at least on the table. So we'll have to see. Our next question is from Simply, and he is a YouTube member. So shout out to you, man. Thank you so much for that. And he wants to know, do you think that Yuji could rip Tengen from Sukuna's body and consume it himself? Uh, yes, I think that is possible. We just need to know like what's going on with Tengen exactly, because we don't know, right? So if Tengen is just sitting in Sukuna's stomach, then yeah, Yuji could theoretically rip that out and consume it himself if he deemed that the move to make. Um, now, is Tengen like fused with Megami Sukuna somehow? Maybe, we just don't really know. And if that's the case, it's going to be harder for him to like pull that out, right? Um, but let's assume Yuji does do that. That becomes really interesting because then it would seem like Yuji might be the vessel for the merger, which has been a long-standing theory in this community that Kenjaku's true purpose for Yuji was to be the vessel for the merger and not just the vessel for Sukuna. So if that were to happen, that would be extremely interesting. Um, but let's assume that does happen. Does that change the rules of the culling game? And no, I don't think so. I think whether Tengen is in Sukuna Megami, in Yuji, or, you know, elsewhere, none of the rules of the culling game would change. Megami would still be the one with the authority to begin the merger. Um, presumably, all of the players would need to pass away before the merger can start. Uh, Tengen just transferring somewhere I don't think would affect any of the current rules. And then the final thing you talk about here is that, you know, Megami being the drama queen he is, if he does come out, he will likely confront Yuji out of frustration for not saving his sister, and then they'll basically have this conflict. And I personally don't see it going that way because I don't think Megami blames Yuji for um, his sister. I think Megami blames himself mostly. And, you know, maybe there's something that happens between where we are now and the end of the story that, like, makes Megami turn against everyone else even more. But the way I see it right now, he's just a kid that's completely given up, um, again, blaming himself for the bad things that have happened. So I don't think he holds any animus towards Yuji specifically. Um, and I've talked about this in some videos before, but... I personally theorize right now that the way this is going is Yuji will be able to save Megami. I feel like that's kind of what Gege has been setting up. So even though he is, you know, in the sunken place right now, I think Yuji will be the one to help him get out of that. And hopefully, you know, Megami can be on team good guy at the end. But we'll have to see.
Next up, Simply Thinking wants to know, does Higuruma's curse technique go on cooldown after his domain is dispelled? And I would think yes. So we got to be specific here because Higuruma has a weird domain that's, you know, combined with his curse technique, just like Hikari, right? So if Higuruma cast Deadly Sentencing, had the courtroom going, but somebody destroyed it from the outside before the courtroom proceedings were able to complete, let's say, then yes, I think his curse technique would go on cooldown. He would have curse technique burnout just like anyone else. Um, so he wouldn't be unique in that way. It wouldn't still be active. However, the important distinction here is that we have seen Higuruma cast his domain complete, like there's been a sentencing, but then we have seen a retrial, you know, like in his um, fight with Yuji, his original fight. They call for a retrial, which basically instantly sets up the domain again. So that isn't him going on curse technique burnout, I think. That's just a part of the functionality of his unique domain. He can basically cast it more than once, similar to kind of how Hikari can do the same thing, but it's really not the same. Um, the way Hikari works is, you know, he does his domain, he gets his jackpot, and then it ends. It's not being destroyed from the outside or anything, right? And then due to his infinite cursed energy, by the time the jackpot's over, he can recast the domain. So this is getting kind of long-winded, and I hope I'm not, like, losing the plot here. But essentially, if Higuruma's domain was destroyed or dispelled, I believe his curse technique would go on burnout just like everybody else. But in the normal use of his technique... He can kind of use his domain in succession due to like the retrial functionality. So hopefully that makes sense. Next up, we got the lucky 777 donation from Ivan who wants to know, what if Gege made two different versions of the manga? One where Gojo lives and one where he dies. And Gege just leaked the one where it's Gojover. Or perhaps they'll take an approach like Naruto where they don't follow the manga and it's not Gojover in the anime, but it is Gojover in the manga. And I gotta say, this is some high class copium here. Uh, I don't think this is the case. I don't think Gege is, you know, putting out fake versions of mangas to like mess with people. Um, so, you know, I think chapter 236 happened. And as far as the anime goes, uh, JJK has actually been extremely faithful to the source material. Really, the only place they deviate is like enhancing fights, like the Sukuna Maharaga fight. You know, they drew that out, made it incredible. Um, whereas in the manga, it was like two chapters, right? So I don't expect Gojo to have a different fate in the anime once it gets there. Um, you know, maybe, you know, maybe we'll get something more from Gojo in some form. So, you know, there's a little bit of copium, but I don't think it's anything like this. Next up, Jalen wants to know, why does Angel have wings? Is it possible she has a mutation like Sukuna since Yuta didn't grow wings or a halo after copying her curse technique? And great question. I really, really hope we find out some more about Angel and what she knows about Sukuna because that is one of the most interesting things still kind of left uncovered in my opinion so i don't know why she has wings a mutation would make sense you know maybe it is a product of her curse technique in some form that yuta didn't copy or just didn't understand enough to copy maybe he didn't want to copy it right i don't know but the fact that you know angel's whole mission is to take out sukuna the fallen like there's just so much religious imagery and symbolism there that there's got to be more to kind of unpack so i'm really waiting for gege to kind of shine some more light on that and speaking of Angel, Edwin asked if I think Angel will reappear, maybe fully incarnated like current Sukuna. And I think Angel has to appear, just for the reasons I was just talking about. There's so much there that's still left uncovered. Now, does that mean she has to appear in the fight with Sukuna? Not necessarily. She could just appear on panel, like not in the fight, and kind of give us some information. But that fully incarnation thing is very interesting. We know that Angel didn't want to fully incarnate and take over Hannah because she thought that was like an abomination. But maybe if Angel was pushed to the brink, she could realize that there's no other choice. I gotta fully incarnate to do my part here. And that would theoretically heal her arm in the same way that Sukuna healed his body when he transformed. So that would be really interesting. I could see something like that happening. Next up, Marcus wants to know, how did Sukuna learn who Yuji was? Meaning that he was the son of his reincarnated twin, right? And I think Sukuna just figured it out from sharing a body and a soul with Yuji for so long. Back in 257, when this information is revealed, Urume is like, what's up with Yuji? Like, there's something weird about him that reminds me of you. 
more so than just your power like being in him. And so if Uruume noticed that, like not even being in Yuji's body, of course Sukuna is going to notice. So I think he just recognized, you know, his own soul, if you were, in Yuji and kind of put two and two together with the fact that Kenjaku had created him. Next up, I had a question from JoJo, which I went ahead and refunded, but the question was, who would win in a fight with equal stats? Jonathan Joestar from JoJo or pre-awakened Yuji? And I have seen part one of JoJo, which is the one with Jonathan, but that's the only part I've seen, and it was a long time ago. So I don't think my knowledge there is sufficient to give you like a really well thought out answer. But from my gut instinct, I would lean Yuji just because I don't remember Jonathan's hacks being that impressive. I'm pretty sure he's like the weakest of all the JoJo's. But I also don't know if in later parts things get expanded on which would make him more impressive. So again, that's why I refunded you. But I would go Yuji even if he's pre-awakened just because I'm assuming what you mean by awakened is, you know, when he awakens shrine. So even pre-awakened Yuji has RCT, has blood manipulation, and has cursed energy manipulation, right? Which means he can hit black flashes. And I know Jonathan had like some sort of healing factor, but you know, if he starts taking some black flashes from Yuji, I don't think he's going to get back up. So I would go Yuji, but for those of you that are more well-versed in JoJo, let me know your thoughts. And finally today, Isaiah wants to know what anime besides One Piece and JJK do you like? And if you are specifically referring to anime here, um, I actually am not watching One Piece. I uh, haven't ever watched One Piece. I've seen like random episodes here and there, like I'm sure everyone has if you're a fan of anime, but uh, I'm reading through the manga for my One Piece journey right now. So I do plan on, uh, once I'm caught up on the manga, going back and watching some of like the most requested anime episodes, because I know there's some amazing ones. Uh, but yeah, I actually don't watch One Piece. Uh, the only anime I'm actively watching right now is Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, and I've already seen it. Um, the reason I'm watching it is I'm trying to get my girlfriend to get into and appreciate anime. Um, you know, she just is not something she ever really like checked out or had in her life at all. So, you know, she got her preconceived notions. And so I'm trying to break through those walls. And I figured Full Metal Alchemist is a pretty good like starter anime to get people into it. So I'm watching that currently. Everything else I'm doing, I'm reading via manga, which is mostly One Piece right now. But um, my favorite animes, so not ones I'm watching, but just in general, uh, I put out a video, I think of my top 10, like a while back. And if I remember, I'm going to try to remember, I'll link it in the comments of this video. Um, but just really quickly, DBZ was the anime that got me into anime. Um, Full Metal Alchemist, obviously. Uh, Trigun, Cowboy Bebop, Samurai Shampoo, um, FLCL. There's there's so many that I that I love. But yeah, the only one I'm watching right now is Full Metal Alchemist. Anyways, y'all, that's it for this one. Don't forget, we just got one week left, so we're almost through this extended Lobotomy Kaisen. But in the meantime, come hang out with us in the Discord. And special shout out to everybody who donated and made this video possible. Thank you guys so much. And thank you everyone for watching. I'll see you soon. Uh, soon.